Born on New Year's Eve, 1903, in Leamington Spa, Warwickshire, William Munger Haynes entered the world far from the glamour of racing circuits or engineering glory. One of five brothers in a working-class family, his father was a cabinet maker, instilling in the young William a respect for craftsmanship and precision. He was a quiet, observant lad, with a passion for understanding how things worked. Though he initially considered a future in veterinary science, financial constraints nudged him towards engineering. At the age of 17, he began an apprenticeship at Humber Limited in Coventry. This decision would steer the course not only of his own life, but also the destiny of British automotive design. At Humber, Haynes immersed himself in every aspect of motor car design, from drafting to testing. He gained a thorough grounding in engineering principles, and by the early 1930s, he had risen to lead Humber's technical development team. His deep understanding of chassis and engine design would later define his career and leave a lasting imprint on the automotive world. By the mid 1930s, SS Cars, soon to become Jaguar, was evolving rapidly from a coach builder buying in rolling chassis to a full car manufacturer. William Lyons, co-founder of SS Cars Limited, had the ambition and the styling flair but lacked a senior technical partner to take the engineering to the next level. At the time, Haynes had built a reputation at Humber Lentied as a highly capable and forward-thinking engineer. His innovative work on chassis design and independent suspension had drawn attention in the Midlands auto industry. Whether through informal industry word-of-mouth or professional recruitment channels, Lyons became aware of Haynes's work at Humber. Lyons made the approach in 1935, inviting Haynes to join SS Cars as chief engineer. When Haynes arrived at SS Cars, he found what was essentially a bodybuilding company with modest engineering resources. The business was still dependent on outsourced chassis and engines, mostly from Standard Motor Company. There was no formal engineering department, no testing facility, and no in-house powertrain development. SS Cars was, at that time, more of a clever assembler than a true automaker. Haynes changed that fast. He established Jaguar's first proper engineering office and began laying the foundations of a complete in-house development capability. He brought in new design methods, created technical documentation systems and began work on Jaguar's own suspension and chassis layouts. He found a blank canvas and turned it into a world-class engineering operator. One of his earliest breakthroughs was the introduction of independent front suspension. At a time when most British cars were still relying on rigid front axles, this was a bold and transformative move that significantly improved ride comfort and handling. Haynes was already setting the tone for what would become Jaguar's hallmark, elegance underpinned by cutting-edge engineering. The outbreak of World War II shifted Jaguar's focus to wartime production, including aircraft components and sidecars. Coventry was a strategic target for the Luftwaffe, and Jaguar's facilities were under constant threat. Haynes and his colleagues, including Lyons and senior engineers, took on nightly firewatching duties atop the factory buildings, often sheltering from bomb blasts while trying to preserve their plant from incendiary destruction. In these quiet, tense moments between air raids, Haynes, Claude Bailey, and Walter Hassan would huddle by lamplight and sketch engine designs on scraps of paper. These clandestine sessions birthed the early concepts of what would become the legendary XK engine. The XK was a dual overhead camshaft in line six with hemispherical combustion chambers, not only designed to be both powerful and reliable, but beautifully presented. It was a remarkable leap forward for a company that had previously relied on engines from Standard Motor Company. The XK engine made its debut in 1948 in the XK120, a sleek sports car that shocked the world with its top speed of 120 miles per hour, the fastest production car of its day. This engine would remain in production in various forms until the 1980s, powering Jaguars from the XK140 and XK150 to the Mark 7, 8, 9 saloons and the iconic E-Type. 
It was also the heart of Jaguar's racing successes at Le Mans, winning five times between 1951 and 1957. But Haynes's contributions went far beyond the XK engine. Under his leadership, Jaguar's engineering department became a hotbed of innovation. The C-Type introduced disc brakes, co-developed with Dunlop, which revolutionised racing safety and braking performance. Haynes liaised closely with Dunlop engineers throughout this development, including Dunlop's Frank Costin and Tommy Wisdom, ensuring the new braking system met the demanding standards of endurance racing. Testing was carried out both on the road and in race conditions, notably on the C-Type's successful debut at Le Mans in 1953. Their collaboration marked one of the most significant safety advancements in motorsport and was soon adopted across the automotive industry. The D-Type, with its monocoque chassis and finned rear end, pushed the boundaries of aerodynamics and structural design. The D-Type's use of aviation-inspired construction methods was directly guided by Haynes, whose wartime experience fed into Jaguar's technical evolution. His insistence on lightweight construction, cooling efficiency and torsional rigidity gave Jaguar a competitive edge against more powerful rivals. Haynes played a central role in orchestrating the integration of advanced technologies into race cars without compromising reliability, an approach that allowed Jaguar to beat more exotic, higher-budget opposition. His work with engineers like Malcolm Sayer, aerodynamics, and Bob Knight, suspension, resulted in track cars that were not only fast but also forgiving and durable, qualities essential for endurance racing like Le Mans. Haynes ensured that lessons from the racetrack were swiftly translated into road car engineering, establishing Jaguar's mantra, Win on Sunday, Sell on Monday. One of the most legendary episodes in Haynes's career occurred during the development of Jaguar's independent rear suspension. Introduced in the E-Type and refined for the XJ6, it offered a level of ride comfort and handling that was unmatched by rivals. But Lyons, ever cautious with the budget, was sceptical of its complexity and cost. Haynes, convinced of its value, made a bold bet. If Lyons wasn't impressed after driving it, he would resign. Lyons drove the prototype. Upon returning, he uttered just two words. It stays. The suspension went on to become one of the most admired features of Jaguar vehicles for decades, copied and praised by competitors and reviewers alike. Despite his immense contributions, Haynes remained a modest, grounded figure. He married Vera Bond in 1933, and they raised a family, including their son, Jonathan, who would later follow in his father's footsteps as a Jaguar engineer. He avoided publicity, preferring to focus on engineering solutions rather than marketing slogans. His colleagues remembered him as a pragmatic and methodical thinker with a dry wit and a collaborative spirit. He was deeply respected, not just for his technical brilliance but for his leadership and mentorship. In his later years at Jaguar, Haynes oversaw the development of the XJ series, culminating in the launch of the XJ6 in 1968, a car widely considered to be one of the finest saloons ever made. The development of the XJ was a long-term goal of both Haynes and Lyons, an effort to consolidate the diverse Jaguar saloon range into a single world-class luxury car. Known internally as Project XJ4, the program began in the early 1960s and was guided by Haynes's insistence on uncompromising engineering standards. He worked closely with Bob Knight, who was responsible for refining the ride and handling characteristics using Haynes's independent rear suspension layout. Haynes was adamant that the new car must match the best in the world in ride comfort, performance and refinement. Countless hours were spent on test tracks and road trials, with Haynes personally involved in evaluating prototypes. He also encouraged close collaboration between the design and engineering teams, ensuring that the mechanical layout supported William Lyon's elegant and aerodynamic body styling. The integration of engineering and aesthetics was a hallmark of the XJ6 and a testament to Haynes's philosophy.
Notable advancements included the development of a quieter cabin, new engine mounting techniques to reduce vibration, and the refinement of the XK engine and Borg Warner automatic transmission to deliver a smooth, luxurious driving experience. The car also introduced a new level of braking and suspension balance for a production saloon. When the XJ6 was unveiled in 1968, it was hailed by critics as the best saloon car in the world, a blend of performance, luxury and understated British elegance that set a new standard. Haynes retired in 1969, just after the launch of the XJ6, and was awarded the title of Commander of the British Empire, CBE, for his services to British industry. Even in retirement, he continued to serve as a consultant to Jaguar, offering guidance through the turbulent years of British Leyland and the challenges of the 1970s. In retirement, he lived on a farm near Snitterfield in Warwickshire, indulging his love of animals and the countryside, perhaps a quiet nod to the veterinary path he once considered. He remained close to his family and kept an eye on the company he had helped build. William Haynes passed away in July 1989 at the age of 85. In 2022, a blue plaque was installed on his childhood home in Leamington Spa, a small but fitting recognition of a man who had transformed British motoring. William Haynes never sought the limelight. He didn't need to. His work spoke through every curve of an E-type, every smooth purr of an XK engine, and every perfectly balanced corner of an XJ6. He was, and remains, the unsung architect of Jaguar's greatness, a quiet genius whose influence continues to resonate on roads and racetracks around the world. This has been a production by Curious Jag. Please like and subscribe.